my trouble with Dr. Mortimer is he's Scottish, and um, I don't sound very Scottish, even though I have a Scottish name, uh, which is McLaren. And um, I've been working on my uh, Scottish accent, so I'm going to travel up to the Highlands next week. Um, Natalie's doing all the expenses paid for me, and we're going to stay in this uh, country house, go shooting, uh, pheasants, and uh, we'll spend a couple of weeks there. And that's how I will get into Dr. Mortimer. Dr. Mortimer, in my eyes, is a hero, for uh, he brings the case to Holmes. And uh, without Dr. Mortimer, there would be no Hound of the Baskervilles, um, because uh, the case would never have been brought to him. I suppose what would have happened is uh, Henry Baskerville, our other American hero, would have arrived at the house um, and got eaten by the dog. So had it not been for Dr. Mortimer's foresight and intuition, there would be no story for us to tell. There are those for whom it is reality. Well, it's, it's terribly hard. Um, I've had to... Uh, transport myself back to the 1930s. Um, I took up smoking um, because everyone smoked um, about 300 cigarettes a day. Um, I threw out the television, uh, brought in a wireless, uh, and I only read old-fashioned newspapers these days as well. Um, it was the only way in. I, I, I've, I've taken into the habit as well of um, wearing my evening dress um, for um, drinks in the evening, and I wear my morning suit to breakfast. Um, and it's brought, brought me into the character, it's brought us alive uh, in a way that no other way could, could, could do that. I'm not touched with Pierce. Young! The word mourn is written in it. He could not find that word. Oh, brilliant. Um, it works best when everyone listens to my ideas because they're all the best ones. Um, <laughs> sometimes Natalie tries to tell me what to do. Uh, and then, then I, I play ball and, uh, <laughs> and um, I, I do that as well. Um, it's great actually, because when you put all the things together, um, it's um, a great spectacle um, watching the mechanics of the show. And especially with all the sound effects put in there as well. And you, you don't watch The Hound of the Basketballs, you watch a radio show that's being put on. And um, some of the best parts are probably um, when uh, we're not speaking actually, like all the interactions that you have between the cast and um, the sound people while the show is being read. Um, it's like acting all the time, I suppose, because uh, you don't go off stage as such. You just keep doing it. Uh, there's also a chap called Stapleton, a local naturalist, a decent enough cove who lives with his sister Belle in Menapet House. She's not an unattractive guy. Yeah, they should. I mean, it's going to be, uh, be manic, because um, we've got um, Henry, playing Carson as like he's like a bit of a conductor so it brings us in and like um, tells us when we're doing this when we're doing that there'll be sheets everywhere everyone be, the whole place will be cluttered with bits of paper and um, we'll have someone banging on the sound and all that because they bring out the props as they go and um, yeah have a batter on them and things like that so the whole thing should probably look like a mess at the end and you'll just think how did they create something like that there'll be a storm of activity um, and also, part of the appeal is like, you walk in there and suddenly you're in 1938. I mean, there's um, no, I suppose, modern introduction to the piece. Like, we walk in um, as if we're about to start a radio show. Typically, my character will end up being late uh, for the beginning of the show. <laughs> I'm not sure why Natalie's chosen my character to do that. Um, but the, the great fun of it, I think, is... Um, to, to watch a 1938 show, really. Uh, um, what was my thread? <laughs>